I've traded stocks from some crazy places from a cruise ship. I was betting uh, pretty big, you know, and it was this was actually the trade that pushed me over a million dollars and the whole power internet went out on that cruise ship and I'm freaking yeah. out. <laughs> Like, you know, just it happens to every guy. It's okay. <laughs> it's it's right. natural. Right. You just, I guess, you just figure it out. You know, as you go. You know, just like trading. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, literally. Long story short, I'm a stock trader. I've made several million, starting with a few thousand dollars. Um, totally self-taught. Didn't know what I was doing in the beginning. Um, still don't know everything. You know, stock trading is not an exact science. Yeah. But what I try to do is pass down lessons um, that I've learned from over 20 plus years now. And people can hate on them. They can ignore my rules. But you usually learn the hard way that it's more expensive, you know, to learn on your own. The stock market basically charges tuition. Mm -hmm. And when you lose a lot of money, that's your lesson. Although you still don't even necessarily know your mistake and you're just down a lot of money. 90% of traders lose. So it's yeah. a very tough industry. Um, and I'm just trying to, you know, teach what I've learned because I've been very fortunate making $5 million um, right. while traveling. I'm, I'm doing this interview from Greece. That's why we had some issues probably right. with the, uh, the app before. But I'm in Mykonos. Um, I'm going to be in Positano and Santorini and Venice the next few days. And then I'm heading over to South Korea. So I want to show people that, you know, using technology, using your brain, using lessons, you can, you know, really craft your own dream life. And that's what I'm trying to do. Absolutely, man. And you're killing it in your space. I see you everywhere. Like every time I go on Instagram, it's an ad popping up. I'm like, okay, Tim, all right. <laughs> Facebook. No, we, like that. <laughs> you know, we have we have ads. Um, yeah. I'm looking for dedicated students everywhere. Like there's yeah. a lot of people who just want hot stock picks. I don't want that. I need people who, you know, literally want to study their butt off. I have six thousand right. plus video lessons. It's not easy to find people who are actually gonna study all of them and then right. use the lessons to really, you know, change their life. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And with that being said, like, how did it really come about for you as far as getting into trade? Like, are you just messing around with things, fiddling around or did it, you know, someone bring it up to you or? Yeah. So my parents gave me control of my bar mitzvah gift money, uh, roughly 12 grand uh, back in 1999. The stock market was going crazy. So they thought that I would lose it all. They're like, give the kid the money. Yeah. Uh, he'll lose it all. It'll be a good lesson. Right. And instead, I turned the 12000 into a little over 100000 senior year of high school, mm -hmm. um, roughly a million dollars after freshman year in college, nearly $2 million before I graduated college. Mm -hmm. I'm from a small town in Connecticut. So, you know, $2 million might not seem like a lot of money. That was huge for me. Right. Uh, and it just uh, became a, an obsession. It wasn't about any one hot stock. I'm looking for different patterns. Um, and that was, you know, 20 years ago. I've just been taking it uh, year by year, pattern by pattern, uh, opportunity by opportunity. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And when you made, you know, your first million, because you said it was when you was graduating college, right? Along that time. What yeah. was going on in your mind? Because I mean, obviously, you're super young. You know, you got your friends and they're probably like, yo, what's going on? How do you do it? Like, what were you thinking? What was going through your head? Yeah. I mean, it was very confusing. I became a philosophy major just because I needed like therapy. Like I was like, I didn't know, you know, like when you make a million dollars nearly in a year, like I did, um, especially that young, like I didn't know if I was like a genius, if I was lucky, if like, I didn't know what was, I was like, come on, is this a prank? Like what's going on? <laughs> Um, but it was lots of small gains. It wasn't any one big gain. It wasn't like I won the lotto. You know, my average gain now over 20 years in trading is just $2,000 a trade. So I see little pockets of opportunity, um, mm -hmm. betting on higher prices and I make money betting on lower prices. A lot of people made money back in 1988, 1998, 1999. But when the market crashed in 2000, 2001, they lost everything. I adapted and I learned short selling where you can profit on falling stock prices. So I, I think that the key to my success has just been adapting, you know, whether it's, you know, trading on the way up or trading on the way down. And then, you know, I had a TV show called Wall Street Warriors uh, that yeah. aired in 2006, 2007. I was drunk in every episode um, because I had lost some money and I was really depressed. And me being drunk made me funnier than the boring financial people uh, on the show. And so then I started getting emails, people saying, hey, I want to learn this stuff. So I got into teaching 
and I adapted. Most people would not give up. Uh, you know, I was running a hedge fund at the time, which is like a big, you know, multi-trillion dollar business, very legitimate, uh, very, uh, I don't know what, what you would say, respected, right? And I gave that up to get into teaching, which is like you have snake oil salesmen everywhere. And people are like, what are you doing? But I saw the opportunity because I'm real in an industry full of fakes, it's good to be real. And so I got into teaching and I adapted. Now I've made millions from teaching and now, you know, I've donated millions for my charity because I started donating some money and it wasn't just about donating to good causes. I actually want to change the world. So now I travel all over the world, uh, visiting the charity, showing it off on social media and I've adapted to social media. And I think how this new technology can change and influence younger people. So you just need to have the right mindset. There's so much opportunity right now in this digital age that far too many people are not taking advantage of. And that's what I want to like get in their face and be like, look, you can work from Mykonos. I might not have the perfect internet connection. There might be screw ups, um, but it's only getting better. And in the next few years, Wi-Fi and whatever new internet technology will allow better stuff. I mean, I've, I've traded stocks from some crazy places from a cruise ship. I was betting uh, pretty big. You know, and it was this was actually the trade that pushed me over a million dollars, and the whole power internet went out on the cruise ship, and I'm freaking yeah. out. And literally, like, you know, I was right because it was a it was a good trade. I, I was following my pattern. I made nearly eighty thousand dollars when the power did yeah. come back on. But like, stupid, stupid, yeah. stupid. Don't trade, you know, in a storm in the middle of the South Pacific from a cruise ship. But no one told me that, you know, most rich people are very tight lipped about making money and what to do and what not to do. And I just want to be the opposite. Man, I love everything you just quoted because you hit on various topics that I really want to dive into so bad. Like for one, I commend you for your effort and everything that you put forth, especially reaching back and basically pulling other people up. And I really admire the fact that you're very transparent in your approach. Uh, there's not too many other people that are very like open and willing to share, you know, what they know, like you said. Um, and I come to find out to learn that it's really coming from a scarcity mindset, you know, because some people think that, hey, if I show you how to make a million day trading or doing this, then it's going to be less for me. But ultimately, that's not the key. You know, that's not the fact, right? So I'm glad you brought that up. I actually got into teaching, hoping that it would put myself out of business because as great as this ride has been, I miss college. I miss my college graduation. I miss birthday, you know, parties galore. My friends think I'm a dick. My relatives think I'm a dick because I'm so obsessed with these patterns. And I'm like, okay, yeah. let me, what do I do? Because I feel guilty if I miss these patterns. Let's say I go to a birthday party, then I see a good pattern and I'm like, damn that birthday party. But yeah. let's say I skip the birthday party and I, you know, take advantage of it and I make like two, three thousand dollars. <laughs> and then my friend is like, all you care about is money. So, I was like in this no win situation. So I was like, all right, let me start teaching. If I become successful as a teacher and I'm successfully uh, get other people using these patterns, maybe I'll, I'll, you know, crush them, right? Like when too many people use a pattern, they'll become obsolete. But then theoretically, I would make a lot of money through teaching. Um, it's interesting though, because I have made a lot of money through teaching, but the patterns haven't changed. And I've just shifted my life. I trade with a small account. I go back to $12,000 every year. Um, show how to grow it. And I donate all my profits to charity. So I've kind of, again, it goes back to adaptation. Um, I still miss some birthday parties, but I attend some. And sometimes I'm even trading. I had a, a famous trade or infamous trade, depending on who you ask. Um, it was down in South Africa. Uh, my charity, uh, Karmagawa, is looking to save the rhino. We did a whole documentary on that. And we go down there and we're literally working with the rhino. We're working with this great charity vet paw, which uh, I donated $250,000 to. And this one day I specifically remember we had to tranquilize a rhino uh, to basically cut off its horn. The horn grows back, but if we like cut off the horn, it's like clipping its fingernails. And that way the poachers aren't as interested in it for at least one to two years. So we have to tranquilize the wild rhino with, from a dart from a helicopter. So there's two helicopters. <laughs> hurting the rhino yeah. and to, I had my laptop in this, in the back of this <laughs> and literally like it was, my trade was supposed to be done before the rhino operation got started, but I brought my laptop with me just in case it was too hot out. So we couldn't tranquilize the rhino right when the market was open. So we had to wait an hour. So I'm sitting in the bush in this like safari van 
waiting for the to cool down so we can tranquilize the rhino. I'm in a trade overnight, so I, I have to, you know, multitask. We tranquilize yeah. the rhino right as the stock market is opening. And I'm like, I have my laptop next to a rhino that's tranquilized, okay. riding off the horn. And people are like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> why did you do this? And I'm like, you know, welcome to my life. I'm trying yeah. to multitask. And, and some people understood it. Some people were like, you're disrespecting the rhino. I'm like, I'm paying for this operation. <laughs> I'm not disrespecting it. This right. is this is what happens. We're saving the rhino and I'm making a trade. And I made like 600 bucks from the bush in South Africa. Um, I used uh, Suzanne of Vet Paws mobile hotspot for wi-fi i was shocked that there was even wi-fi you yeah, know we're yeah. in like northeastern south africa like in the middle of nowhere but i got the trade done and that kind of trade exemplifies what i'm doing whether i'm you know trying to help a rhino or i'm in mykonos uh, I'm, I'm still trying to take advantage of these patterns but i trade with a small account and i teach it too so i make video lessons about everything yeah man that's amazing that, that story in itself is like legendary, you know, from a helicopter with a laptop, trying to run it like- Dude, it was, <laughs> it was absolutely insane. And I was just laughing because I was just like, yeah. I have to share this. I have to yeah. talk about it. And my right. haters are like, you know, and then the animal activists hated it because yeah. like, you know, you have like this rhino, it's a very sensitive thing and I'm making a trade. I have it live on video too. And, and <laughs> I'm, I'm right. literally shaking my head. I'm like, I'm so sorry that I'm doing this. I don't want to be doing this. This is not my choice. But right. when there's a good pattern, what I wait for are these good setups in the market. And when there's a good setup, I act. I can't predict when. I don't know if you ask me right now, what's the, the best stock? I have no stocks right now. I see no truly great setups. The way that I trade, the way that I teach is that I trade like a sniper. So I'm waiting for the perfect shot. Okay. Got you, got you. I love it, man. That's that's a, definitely a James Bond scenario. But <laughs> with that being said, I definitely want to dive into it because I know it's probably people listening and probably watching this video. They're like, okay, we're talking, we're talking trading. But can we break down a little bit more about you know penny stocks trading? You know the the bars, the way you see things. You know, just to give an idea more in, in concept for them. Yeah. So most penny stocks are scams um, or they're just gonna fail. They have like one or two products. They're like the worst companies in the world. Most people look down on penny stocks. If you've seen like the Wolf of Wall Street, um, yeah. he was promoting penny stock scams, basically. Um, I highly encourage Jordan Belfort to learn from him. If you want to learn to be a career criminal, he's still teaching. He's a master criminal. He still owes his victims over $100 million. Good job, Jordan. You know, you're a fantastic role model for all career criminals. But he's also the antithesis of what I want to be. I don't want to scam people. I want to teach people. That's why I talk about how most penny stocks are scams. Um, when I first got started teaching, I would have fun with it because I don't mind being in a scam if it's being promoted. Like the beautiful thing, there might not be the wolf of Wall Street anymore, but there's lots of smaller wolves of Wall Street and they promote these scams for days or weeks on end. And it's predictable because even though the company is going to go bankrupt, you know that it's their job as a promoter to get the stock up for several days or weeks. So you can ride it up but you have to know that it's a scam. You have to understand, wait a minute, I know how the story ends, this company ends up at zero. So you can't mm -hmm. fall in love with any story or any technology. That's right. why I have to be so blunt about it. Um, okay. Otherwise people fall in love because all these little penny stocks, they have some miracle cure for cancer. They found some amazing gold uh, you know, field. They found some amazing oil in Ecuador. They always have like this miracle story and it's never true, like literally never maybe like one in a million. So you can pretty much know that the company is going to fail. But if you know that, you can still work your way backwards. When a stock is being promoted for several days or weeks, it can triple, quadruple, go up 10 times before crashing. So yeah. I see this pattern of promotion. I wait for it. I try to ride it up sometimes. Yeah. And then you can also make money on the way down. You can short sell these stocks. If you know that it's a scam, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when are other people going to realize it. Um, and the companies basically say it. If you read their legal filings, which are legally required uh, SEC filings, they're like 70 to 100 pages long. Most people just don't want to read them. But they talk about in their filings, like we have no cash. We will not last another three months unless we raise money. And that's why they try to increase their stock price to raise money to survive. It's a pump and dump scheme. So this happens again and again. No one company matters. No one technology matters. It's the whole process by which these small you know, companies, and whether they're a scam or they're just a, a crappy company, I don't really care. Um, for me, I know how the story ends. 
which is very different than, you know, Google or Facebook or Amazon, where you're like judging what is the value of the company, how good are their products. Penny stocks have no products. The products are <laughs> smoke screen just yeah. for the stock and for yeah. insiders and management to enrich themselves with salary or options. So we're trading a very different game. And until me, nobody really even taught about this game because most people are just like, no, I want to stay away from penny stocks. Right. They're all scams. And I'm like, yes, they are scams. They're predictable. I have blog posts where I'm like, why I invested $50,000 into this scam. And people are like, what? Why would you? <laughs> Why, why would you throw away? And I, in the blog post, I explained, yes, I invested $50,000 because it's day one of the promotion. Promotions usually last five, seven, 10 days, depending on the budget. In the bottom of a, a promotion from like a Wolf of Wall Street type character, it says, we have been paid. In the bottom of the freaking email, there's a disclaimer. That's how they make it legal. We've been paid $2.7 million or we have been paid 500,000 shares for marketing this stock. And the bigger the marketing budget, the longer the promotion is gonna be. So you know that it's usually gonna last. Obviously, like it's dangerous. You know, all penny stocks are dangerous. All trading is dangerous. Yeah. But it's easier trying to judge a promotion than it is trying to judge the value of a company. That's what I've learned over 20 years. So I ride these promotions up sometimes. I ride mm -hmm. the promotions down. Um, and that's it. Gotcha. I love it, man. I love it. And really to, to break that down in office, I know that was a lot of information for a lot of people. They're like, wait, what? <laughs> but I appreciate you. Play this back a few times. <laughs> Tim's like best in scams and he likes it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Love it, love it. But with that being said, though, because I know you mentioned earlier when we was talking, um, you said that you went through a transition where you had a big loss, right? It was something that's very difficult uh, during that time. Now, what exactly occurred, you know, during that time where it was just, you know, detrimental to? Yeah. So I sound all wise and cynical and conservative now, but, you know, I wasn't this way. Like, I had a $500,000 loss before I realized the game. I did fall in love with this company's technology. They basically invented print at home ticketing. Um, I invested a third of my hedge fund, basically ended up losing it all because I couldn't get out of the stock. I did uh, restricted stock, which means you can't sell the shares uh, publicly in the stock market. So I broke my trading rules, but back then I didn't even have my trading rules. I didn't know, you know, risk management. I didn't know how to cut losses quickly. Now rule number one for me is cut losses quickly. I'm not always right. I still lose roughly a third of the time, but I have lots of small losses of one, two, three percent back then. I, you know, I never had any losses until the $500,000 loss. So I felt like I was perfect in my head. Um, and if you know, you know, just different stories throughout history, you know, Icarus thought that he was a god. He thought he could fly. He flew too close to the sun and his, you know, wax wings melted and he fell back down to earth. That's basically what I did. Mm -hmm. I thought that I was, you know, perfect because I had turned 12,000 into nearly 2 million trading these penny stocks. Um, but then I fell in love. I broke the rules that I didn't know at the time were so valuable. And I lost basically a third of my hedge fund. The press ripped me apart. Um, and that really solidified the rules that I now teach. So I'm grateful for that loss. Um, but it also led me to drink for several months. It led me to be very funny on a reality show that was filming while I was drunk for those few months. Uh, it led to everything. So I've had ups, I've had downs, but the big losses, the big mistakes, um, not just that I understand from my own personal experience, but from what I hear with other people, it's those, those gigantic things that like really hurt your heart that, you know, makes you, I never want to feel that again, like that kind of mindset. I'm always scared. So now I trade much more conservative. I don't care how good my research is or how right a, a position feels. I don't bet big because I don't want to risk losing 500 grand again. It, it just hurt too much. Yeah, absolutely. I totally understand. I mean, I feel bad just losing ten dollars if it's all something small, <laughs> you know. But I definitely understand that. And to really, you know, excel in a conversation, like what was not only going through your mind during that time when you made that loss and you took that loss, but how did you bounce back from it? Like, how did you overcome that transition? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't easy. Um, it was literally like. I, I was in, involved in the loss. Like it was, I knew I was going to lose, but I couldn't get out of it. It was a restricted uh, position. So you have unrestricted shares and restricted shares. Restricted shares, you can't sell. Um, mm -hmm. 
the, they become unrestricted over time. But the stock was crashing before I could get out of all my restricted shares. Um, so I knew I had the loss. And that sucked, but at the same time, the TV show was taking off and I started getting a lot of emails. So it was very conflicted because I was like, I know my rules are good for trading. Now this loss really makes me understand that my rules are good. And I started getting all these emails, people saying, hey, I want you to teach. So I got out of the hedge fund world, literally at the worst time, like when my hedge fund was losing 30%, um, the press was ripping me apart. They said like fame had gotten to me. like. That's why I was losing. They didn't realize like I had already made, you know, the investment before the TV show even started filming. Um, and it became a challenge for me to like prove everybody wrong. When the press rips you apart, when you have your own self doubt, I didn't know if I was going to come back. So I went back to $12,000, just like I do every year now. But when I first got started teaching, you know, it was a very controversial move. I don't think anybody else has gone from hedge fund manager to teacher. Um, and people thought that I had lost all my money. And they're like, oh, he's just lost everything. They didn't realize I just lost a, you know, a third of the hedge fund, which is bad, but I didn't lose everything. I was still up over four years, um, but I had a great lesson. So it was, it was weird because I had lost so much you know, money and I had lost so much like publicity wise, but I knew deep down that I still had these rules that had gotten me rich in the first place. So it became like me trying to prove myself and that's why I went back to 12 grand. Um, when I got started teaching in late 2007, uh, there was a website called Covester that could tap into your brokerage account. So I put the 12 grand uh, into the brokerage account, even though, you know, that wasn't all the money I had left. People thought like, that's all you have left. But I was like, no, I'm, I'm purposely going to kind of like rope a dope all my haters in. I'm going to lure them in, make them think that like I've lost everything because hate spreads on the internet as you know, my business proves. Um, and I was, single-handedly prove that I could re, re repeat my feet from 12,000 to 1.65 million. It didn't work out exactly like that um, because I wasn't just trading for profit. Every single trade, I did a blog post, I did a video lesson, good or bad. Um, but over a few years, I turned 12,000 into basically a quarter of a million dollars, which is pretty damn good. Um, and I became the number one ranked trader out of 60,000 on Covester. My first online hater, Michael Good, wrote a blog post that said, Timothy Sykes is full of BS. I, I always respond to my haters. We went back and forth in the comments. You can still read this blog post 10 years later. He gave my stuff a try. He's now made over 2 million. He's moderator of my chat room now. So if you can turn your haters into your biggest fans, then you have. So I used all the challenge. I used all of the negativity to really push myself to, you know, right the wrong. I felt very wrong. You know, I felt like Tom Brady getting picked 199th in the draft. He has like yeah. a chip on his shoulder. I had a chip on my shoulder and I still do, you know, people still like 10 years later, I have several millionaire students, but most people, if you talk about penny stocks, they're just like, Oh, it's a scam. What do you think about Tim Sykes? Oh, he's a scam. So I have more proving to do. And that's why I show every single trade. I donate my profits to charity so that I can teach the process. That's what it's all about. Yeah, man. Well, you don't have to prove anything at this point. <laughs> You're definitely doing it. You're living it out. <laughs> don't, tell me that. don't tell my ego that it's good <laughs> to have a chip on your shoulder. It pushes you. I wouldn't work this hard if I didn't have haters. I would just go out and enjoy Mykonos and get yeah. sun and probably get cancer like everyone else sitting outside right now. But instead, I'm in my air conditioned room. I'm looking at trades. I'm doing interviews in my mind. I still have a lot of proving to do and, and in reality. You know, when the vast majority of the world still thinks you shouldn't touch a penny stock and that I'm crazy for teaching this. I get, you know, daily emails from people like saying you shouldn't teach this, but they're just, you know, thinking like very generally like Wolf of Wall Street, like penny stocks or scams versus me where now I have a thousand plus free videos on YouTube. It goes into the specifics. I go into the nuances of this niche. So I have like few haters, but then I have a hundred people being like, wow, this is amazing. So right. I like the, the haters. I want more haters. Um, hopefully the show can give me some more haters because I use it as fuel. You know, yeah. I eat haters for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is why I've gotten fat. Um, I need more, more fuel and my belly likes it. They taste good. Haters are like a, a mix of like truffle and saffron. It's like a delicacy. It's delicious. Right. It's mwah, they're pretty beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. The nice glass of Petrus wine, a few thousand yeah. wine. Absolutely. I have a glass of Chianti. 
<laughs> right, right. Well, man, like I said, you definitely are leading by example. You're very transparent in everything that you do. And I really appreciate how you break things down. And, and hearing that story, basically saying, hey, I lost it all in a sense of losing a great portion of my funds to being able to come openly and share your story about it and find center. You know, a lot of people have that disconnect and they, you know, they go in a downward spiral. And for you, you was able to overcome it. So my next question, you know, outside of that is for those upcoming traders, those people that may be watching this video right now or the haters that's out there right now still doubting. Like haters. What, <laughs> what would be, you know, those principles that I know you briefly touched upon that helped you overcome, you know, that difficulty. Yeah. Like I mean, yeah. Again, it, it helps that I, I am real in an industry full of fakes. So, um, I, you know, I did actually turn a few thousand into several million. I show my income tax returns. I show my audits and more importantly, I know what I had to do. Like I, I experienced it. Um, so once you have success, you know, you can start to kind of like break down the process and figure out what made me successful and then kind of repeat that over and over again. But some people never have had success. So they're like, what do I do? Well, then learn from someone who has had success. I never had a teacher. So my job every day is to be the teacher to people that I never had because I learned everything the hard way. I had to learn from my $500,000 loss. Um, I had to learn uh, not even just the $500,000 loss, but lots of small losses, lots of boneheaded mistakes. So get a mentor that can speed up your learning curve um, from somebody with experience. And that's the beautiful thing about the internet. There's so many people willing to share everything, but beware of fakes, you know, beware of people who claim to be rich, beware of people who, who claim to make others rich. They have to prove it because there are unfortunately a lot of fakes, you know, in the guru industry, uh, you can call them furus, fake gurus. You know, yeah. I only got into teaching because I was on this TV show and because of the loss and because of a lot of things, um, I wouldn't get into teaching if I didn't have this whole, you know, experience with a lack of transparency, with people hating on penny stocks, with my big loss, with the press smearing me. I've had like a, a kind of a crazy journey, um, but it's brought me here and now I'm going to make the most of it. So I, I love teaching and I encourage anybody who wants to learn not just stock trading, but in any niche, you know, find someone who is a documented a uh, multi-year, if not multi-decade uh, track record of success, even if they failed at some point, as long as they had some success, because even if they had success like 10 years ago, some people think, oh, that no longer applies. It does. It's, it's crazy how similar uh, the lessons are industry versus industry and year over year and decade over decade. You need to figure out what makes someone successful and then try to take little bits of that. It's not an exact science. You know, I can't like just say, hey, you're going to be a millionaire. You're going to be a millionaire. But right, right. You know, I can teach through my own experience. And that speeds up the learning curve for others when they don't have experience. Absolutely. Leading by example. Love it. And that's definitely the best way to go about things, too. So now, because my mind is just everywhere when it comes to this, because I'm really enjoying this, because I'm learning so much without the same Yeah, time, of course. Like, I love talking about it. You know, and, and I really appreciate you again for, for doing this. But No, of um, course. I wish we had more time. I got to go in seven minutes, FYI. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely precious. So, you know, just to wrap it up here in a sense, the, like, how are you different than you were five years ago, you know, based off your current experience of your success from trading to teaching to doing what you, it's, it's karma gawa correct i don't want to butcher that yeah in just your growth overall. yeah no i'm trying to think because i think i was i i want to say that i'm fatter now but i think i might have been fatter five years ago i go up and down like the stock market my weight um yeah. i've gotten happier that's basically what it is because now uh you know in the past five years my, my charity uh, foundation didn't exist this is a good story for you and this is actually a, a good way to tie everything together so yeah. not only do i have haters with you know me teaching about penny stocks, but I have haters where people are like, I don't wanna pay for your lessons. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, let me create free videos on my YouTube channel so that you can see what I do is real. So I have a thousand free videos. The problem with free videos is because they're free, people don't put a value on them. I'm like, okay, so people don't wanna pay me because they hate me or whatever, they think I'm full of crap. They don't wanna watch free videos because free videos seem cheap. What is the option? So I created a guide called howtomakemillions.com. Um, if you go to howtomakemillions.com, you can see it. it's a 35-hour guide 
it right. all the money from this guy that took me literally six plus months to make goes to charity. So mm -hmm. as long as people pay for it, but I don't get the money, that makes people happy. I don't make a dollar from it. And this stupid guy, just to kind of like get people to learn, to get my haters to learn, um, has raised over $4 million now for charity. It's my best-selling guide. Um, or it's raised over $3 million. I've personally donated $4 million. But it's, it's kind of crazy how it came about. And that's how my charity really blew up. Like I was always donating a little money, but I was never donating like literally millions of dollars per year like I have been because of this guy. And that really started a whole movement where I was like, wow, I like this. Um, my friend Neil Patel built a school in Cambodia. I'm always competitive with Neil. So I wanted to build a school. So I built my school right next to his. My school was three times the size. I went to Cambodia and I was like videoing it. I was like, here's your school, Neil. And it's like this little, you know, it's a good school. It's a little school. But then I show my school and all the kids. And when I show my iPhone, I had all the kids like cheering. And I was like, here's Neil's school. Nobody's in front of it. Here's my school. And all the kids are cheering. So mm -hmm. I got into charity kind of inadvertently. Um, but once I started visiting these third world countries, I couldn't stop. When I went to Laos, I was supposed to donate a quarter of a million dollars uh, from the DVD sales. But I met some children and they just melted my heart. I donated a million dollars. My account's on the phone yelling at me. He's like, you haven't made this much to donate this much. I'm like, shut up. We're doing it. These kids need it. Um, yes. By traveling, by dedicating my work to charity, um, it's made me a lot happier in the past five years. And I have more millionaire students. My millionaire students now help me teach. So before I used to give multiple webinars every week, I would like lose my voice by the end of the week. Now I give one webinar a week. And my top students also give webinars so my students can, you know, kind of get uh, lessons from a bunch of different people. And it's kind of cool, like, you know, when your students become millionaires and then they know your rules yeah. and then they can help out. So I'm basically crowdsourcing for more employees. So mm -hmm. the more successful I make my students, the more employees and help I'll have. And now we have a nice little army of teachers. And now I have a nice little army uh, for Karma Gawa on social media. We've made two documentaries in the last few years, one on saving the rhino, one on saving the coral reefs. The coral reefs one today literally just passed 3 million views because we have this army of social media people who want to you know, do better. I share everything with social media. Yeah. At first, my charity photos and videos did the worst because people were like, oh, I don't want to think about this negativity. But then you know, I got better at how I like showed, wait a minute, this is negative, but if we spread awareness, if we, you know, attack these problems, we can actually fix them. And now we have literally 500,000 plus followers on Karmagawa, crazy engagement, more than like PETA or, uh, you know, these Greenpeace, like these big charities. And yeah. somehow my little charity has better social engagement because we've been better at really uh, telling the story. So I'm getting better at, at telling my own story and teaching, being blunt as fuck. Can I swear? No, I've been I've been good with not swearing, but <laughs> love I, it, love I gotta be blunt as fuck. Like I have to show in yeah. interviews like this that I'm real, teaching real. wise, charity wise, all my donations are public, all my trades are public. Transparency is the key to the future in finance and in charity and in life, I think. Absolutely. And I, I totally agree about it all. And I greatly appreciate you again for coming on. Like I said, I I know I don't have you long and I would love to sit here and chop it up a little bit more, but just to end it on one last question for us as a yeah. general, you know, statement that we like to do here is what is the next level for Tim Sykes? Like, what are you aiming for now? In life? Yeah. So I have five millionaire students so far. I have 54 schools built. Um, hopefully the next time we talk, I'll have, you know, a hundred schools built, maybe yeah. 10 millionaire students. It's creating successful student by student, building school by school, and then seeing how that plays out over time. Um, you know, 54 schools, it's, 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 a, it's a number, but it's just a drop in the bucket of what we really need. My goal is to build a thousand schools uh, worldwide. Um, you know, once the kids in these third world countries get education, then they can learn skills, then they can earn money, and it becomes this whole uh, beautiful circle. Right now, there's very little education. They're basically condemned to lives of poverty forever because they have no skills. They have to provide for their family. So they beg on the streets and if they can like get a dollar out of a tourist that's a good day um we need to change their mindset we need to change 
their knowledge base. And even that trading, 90% of traders lose, not because trading is so hard, but because the rules are kind of counterintuitive. So I got to teach these counterintuitive rules. I got to reach more people. I got to build more schools. I got a lot to do. That's why I got to go. Absolutely. Well, you're going to accomplish it all, man. And I can't wait to see your success. You're killing it in the game. Keep leading, man. I'm definitely going to stay in contact with you. And again, I appreciate you so much for coming on. And uh, until next time, guys, much love, peace, and blessings. And I got to let them know where they can follow you and find you at. <laughs> Google uh, is Timothy Sykes a scam. And, uh, you know, start your research on me that way. I always like that because most people who hear these stories, they think it's like too good to be true. So yeah. just go through, learn that way. It's fine. That's the beauty of being real. You can see what my haters say. You can see what my fans say. Um, but yeah, Google is Timothy Sykes a scam and start your research on me that way. Excellent. Excellent. I'm going to put everything down in the description below, guys, so you guys can have that tuned in. Definitely blow up his Instagram. Check him out. Show love and support. Check out his movement, his charity, and just see how he actually shows the proof on what it takes to be successful, especially in day trading and in life. Thanks so much, Tim. I appreciate you, man. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. Cheers. Hey, Tim Sykes, Millionaire Mentor and Trader. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they help you. I want to share everything that I've learned over the years. You can check out more videos right over there. And also click subscribe so that you can watch all of these videos, get that knowledge, and become my next millionaire student.